Today I will show you how I feed my starters. On the right here we have my rye starter, which I have named Riley. I feed it with whole grain rye flour, so as you can see it's quite thick and it has these very large bubbles and it doesn't really move around when you turn the glass. He has not been fed for 24 hours. And then on the left we have my wheat starter, which has also not been fed for 24 hours. And in comparison to the rye starter, it's quite liquid. As you can see, it's moving around the, the bottle. So we're going to give these guys some food and we're going to make them happy. So something that's really important when you go to feed your starter is the percent hydration. And this is also important when you're making a dough. So oftentimes when you read about dough, you'll see like 80% hydration sourdough or 60% hydration dough. And 80% hydration dough is not 80% water. What the percent means is the percent of the flour. So the flour in a recipe is always 100%, and then the amount of water is a proportion of that flour. So for example, if you have a dough with 450 grams of flour and 360 grams of water total, you have 360 divided by 450 times 100, which equals 80% hydration. And another example would be if you have 2.2% salt, which would be 10 grams of salt in that 450 grams of flour. It's a little bit confusing. There's other resources online if you are overwhelmed by this that you can look at to learn more about hydration. So why I wanted to introduce hydration is because my starter is fed at 100% hydration, meaning that the starter is fed equal amounts of flour and water. This is also known as a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one feed which essentially means one part starter, one part flour, one part water. An example of this would be you have 25 grams of starter and then you mix in 25 grams of flour as well as 25 grams of water to get that one to one to one ratio. So you don't always have to feed your starter at a one to one to one ratio. You can feed it at a higher ratio, for example, a one to two to two ratio which would be, for example, 25 grams of starter, you feed it 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water, which might be a ratio that I use if I'm making bread because that bread will require 100 grams of starter and I want some left over in order to make, or in order to feed and keep the starter going. You can also feed higher up to like one to three to three or one to four to four, but I usually only do that if I plan to make a big batch of bread or something like that. But I don't want to overwhelm you with the math. For right now, you should just know that I'm going to be feeding both of my starters today with a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. So let's feed this rye starter to begin with. We'll be feeding it some whole grain rye flour. So this is our rye starter from before, and here's me showing the flour that I'll be using to feed it. This is a locally milled flour, so it is whole grain rye flour. And I'm just showing the texture here. It's got some bran and some germ in it but also some endosperm as well. And here's a little bit closer look at the starter. In a second here, I'm going to start mixing it to show you how thick and viscous it is. Rye has a different structure than wheat. Um, and I haven't gone into the details of this yet, but I might in a future video. But as you can see, it looks quite thick and pasty. All right, so let's feed the starter, which hasn't been fed for 24 hours. So we're putting this very thick starter into a zeroed out bowl on a scale. And I'm going to do roughly about 40 grams of starter. And it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. If you're a gram or two off, it's not the end of the world. So zero at the scale again. And then we'll start adding some of that whole grain rye flour, up to 40 grams. It's giving off quite a bit of dust. Okay, there we go. And then we'll start adding the water. The water is the thing you want to be careful with because it can really, you can really overshoot the water and add way too much by accident, and then it's quite difficult to take out. And if you're worried about that, you can always add the water first and then add the other ingredients on top of it. Okay, so then after the water's added, we can start mixing it. 
Um, a note that I want to make is that you don't have to use a separate bowl to mix your starter. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to transfer it into a clean jar after I'm done. But you can actually uh, mix inside the jar as well. Like you can discard some of your starter and then you can mix inside of the jar and then just make sure to scrape down the sides of the jar with a spatula when you're done, a rubber spatula. So as I'm mixing this, you can see it's quite thick. It was thick before and it's thick again. And it's not really getting stretchy, it's kind of just like a very thick paste. There's not much evidence of gluten formation here. A little bit, but not much. Okay, so now this is just demonstrating me putting it into a nice clean jar. It's really nice to use straight uh, sided jars for feeding your starter and maintaining it because it's really easy to scrape it in and out of these types of jars. And then I use a spoon to kind of smooth it out because it's so thick it just takes a minute to do that. And then this is the surface of the starter. As I said before, it's quite pasty, quite thick. It doesn't necessarily have to be smooth on top. And then what I wanted to mention is that this is the extra starter that we had before from the jar that we took it out of. You can use this in your bread, you can keep it in the fridge or the freezer and store it, or you could just toss it. It doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you'd like with it. Okay, time to feed the wheat starter. I normally feed this starter about 50% whole grain wheat flour and about 50% bread flour or all-purpose white flour. So he's quite liquid. He hasn't been fed in 24 hours. So very bubbly, but very liquid. It definitely needs a feed because the gluten has started to break down and it's just, it's a big gloopy mess. I'm just kind of demonstrating it moving around very easily as opposed to the rice starter earlier, which didn't really move around a lot. This is the type of flour that I use. I do use bread flour usually, but currently I just have all purpose flour. It's very white, very soft, because it's mostly the endosperm, or it is just the endosperm of the wheat grain. And then here's the whole grain flour that I use. And you can see this one's a bit different. It has some, some, some germ and some bran in it. And you can feed your wheat starter just uh, all-purpose flour or just whole grain flour. A lot of people like to use just whole grain, but I don't know. I've always kind of preferred a mix of 50-50. So instead of scooping this into the bowl like we did with the rye starter, we can actually pour it because it's so hungry that it's just completely liquid at this point and quite bubbly. So we're going to get to about 40 grams. Um, I overshoot it just a little bit. And then zero it out. And then I add the water. And again, be careful with the water. It might be smarter to add it first, but I never do for some reason. I'm not sure why. And like I said before, if you're one or two grams off, it's not a big deal. Um, and then we'll, we'll add about 22 grams of this whole grain flour, or whole grain uh, wheat flour, whole wheat flour. And then we'll do the other half as that white all-purpose flour. But you can, of course, do 100% of either of these flours instead of 50-50 mix. And just about there. So yeah, one or two grams off is not the end of the world. And now I'll show how it gets mixed together. And you'll see there's a bit of a difference between this one and the one before. Um, it will get thick as opposed to how thin the starter was when we, when we poured it into the bowl. And you can see it gets stretchy because the gluten's starting to form. And if you use only whole grain flour, it'll be even thicker, most likely. And just as before, you can also feed it in the jar and then scrape down the sides. Um, first discarding or using some first before you feed it. But I kind of like the bowl and then moving to a clean uh, jar method. It just, I don't know, it just feels cleaner. Um, it is a bit wasteful because you have to like clean the jar each time, clean the bowl each time, but I just... 
since I feed my starter so rarely, it's kind of nice to just give it a nice clean jar instead of having any dry flour that might kind of impede its rise or, or just cause issues. So as you can see, it's quite a bit more liquid than the rye starter. And yours might be thicker or thinner than this, if, even if it's 100% hydration. That kind of just depends on how liquid your starter was to begin with. Like, mine hadn't been fed in 24 hours, so it was quite liquid. Um, but if yours is a bit thicker, that's okay too. 